If you're new to our church, do feel One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. 
You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church.
If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and lanes, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy.
Thanksgiving, the Golden Eagles invite you to join them for a classic Christmas session, starting off with the musical A True Christmas for Joe Jungkook, featuring hymns and songs and carols from the old, old days. There will be a fun little quiz with prizes too. After that, find out about the meaning of Christmas in Wuhan as we zoom with friends from Wuhan live. It's gonna be a fun session, so we hope to see you all there. This upcoming healing and miracle night has invited Pastor Sam Surindran to share on the topic God's Prison Break. Pastor Sam has been in full-time Christian ministry for 34 years and also pioneered the Excel Point Community Church. He has authored a book titled Found in Christ and has since written multiple devotional books and discipleship manuals. We invite everyone to join us and be blessed by his sharing. DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. It's our favourite time of the year again. It's Christmas time. Christmas time! This year, the theme for Christmas at SIBKL is Rescue. In our time of need, a Saviour is born. So we want to celebrate the birth of Jesus because God loves us so much that He sent His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to rescue us. Wow, this is so exciting, Miranda. So, do you want to tell us more about this? Sure. We have put together something special just for you. We'll be having Christmas at church right here in SIBKL at Bangunan Yin on the 25th and 26th of December. Registration for seats are now open. Jump into our website, don't wait anymore and book your seats because spaces are limited and we do not want you to miss a thing. Want to keep it cosy and personal? You can also celebrate Christmas at home. Get together and host a watch party in small groups and you can tune in to our online service with friends and family. Now, here's the best part. Wow! We have prepared a party pack including a host guide on how to run an amazing Christmas at home. Go to our website and register for a party pack today. Wow, Aaron, looks like everything has been prepared for us and I'm so ready for Christmas. And all we have to do now is to invite our friends and family to yeah. join us for our Christmas celebrations. Let's get excited and celebrate Christmas, Christmas at SIBKL!
Hello, greetings to you all at SIBKL. Welcome back to the church. I'm Pastor Gilbert. And it's so good to be back in the house of God. And I know that, uh, you know, this place is packed. Every weekend is packed. It's so good that you got your seats. You know, Christmas is just around the corner, as you can hear from the clip just now. Wow, what are you going to do during this Christmas? You know, for me, the first thing is this coming Friday. I'm looking forward to have Christmas with our Christian brothers and sisters from Wuhan, China. Wow, you know, join us if you want to. It's all in Zoom in the Golden Eagles, as you can find on Friday, this 10.30 a.m. And also, you know, I'm looking forward to, I don't know what, have, is any one of your Christmas trees already up in your house? Anyone? Wow, mine is not up. I have to work hard the next week and to get it up. And I took some days off just so that I can put up the Christmas tree too. <laughs> yeah. Well, Christmas is in the air. And, uh, you know, as you, as you can hear, that we are going to have Christmas at the church. Wow. You know, and this year, it's a very beautiful, I can see the, you know, the, the artwork is so beautiful. The team is on rescue. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to encourage all of you to book your seats early. And in fact, actually, it starts today. You know, our Christmas, this, is, uh, this year we're having on the 25th, which is on Saturday. And Sunday is uh, also, you know, we are going to extend that into the Christmas weekend. So on Saturday, our service will start at 10 a.m. Yeah, so and on Sunday it's at 8.30 and 11 a.m. So get your seats today. Don't wait for next week and so forth. You can go in today to book your seats. Well, if you are not coming, well, we want everyone to come, but you can't get the seats. You can also celebrate at home. And we have planned all these goodies back. As you can, the, you know, you, you saw in the video. Wow, all the goodies, Christmas pack that you can have. So just go into the website and you, the link below here and those of you who are online, you can just check and go in and say that you want to have Christmas at home and you want to be the host and you can take one of the pack home, alright? So it's a beautiful pack and I want to, you know, you will enjoy that uh, to celebrate as a host in your home. And after, after that, we are going to have a countdown. You know, when was the last time we had a countdown? I, I believe that last year we did not have because of that, that COVID time. But this year, you can have the countdown to 2022. Hey, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And we are going to pack this place up, yeah? Pack this place up so that uh, we can, you know, celebrate and reflect on the goodness of God for this year and also to look forward for next year as we move forward to 2022. Amen. So book your ticket and it's also open today. And join us on the 31st night. It's at 10 p.m. Praise the Lord. Now I know that uh, any one of us who are new in this place, I just spent some of the people, uh, you know, just now from uh, VJ, Richard VJ, and the uh, and also, the fa- and also the family of uh, Wani and Lionel, who are first time here. Yeah, the, the extended family, first time. So those of you who are first time here, just raise your hand. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, over here too, praise the Lord. How about in the sixth floor? Any one of you who are first time? Oh yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah, there are some hands over up there at the sixth floor. Welcome everyone, and we want to tell you that you are special and after the service, we have a special token for you to take home. So go to the connect counter at outside there and our you know, friendly people there will connect with you and give you a gift. And those of you who are on online, online friends, if you are first time with us, go to the link chat here in the light up the chat room and say, hey, I'm also new, my first time coming to online and go into the connect counter right at the link there, go and then check in and we will connect with you soon. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And let's, let's just arise and then we want to just uh, pray for this time even later on, we are going to have Pastor John to come and share the powerful word of God that God has given to him. And let's just pray for this service. Amen. Come, let's just uh, lift up our hands to the Lord. Lord, it is such a wonderful day to come to your house, God. 
We want the Lord to honor you and to give you the highest worship and praise that's due to your holy name. So come, Lord, in your power. Come, Lord, in your glory and fill this whole sanctuary that everyone that comes, everyone that listens at the online, in Jesus' name, we will receive your word. We will receive your authentic presence right where we are. We give you all glory and all praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, church. Let us lift up the name of Jesus in this place and exalt the Lord our God. For Jesus is our Emmanuel. Amen. He is the God who is with us. Because Jesus came, we can have life and life abundantly as He gave us light and life. Hallelujah. The ceiling in His wings. Blessing. Heart the herald. Heart the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mount. God and sin is reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. Live angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Hallelujah. We exalt the name of Jesus in this place. Jesus Christ. All of heaven adore. Jesus Christ. Christ by heaven. Christ by high as heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord. Him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Will they flesh the Godhead see? He'll the incarnate deity. Please this man with men to dwell. Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the new born So we sing hallelujah. And life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Now he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give the second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. So we sing hallelujah.
Amen. Church, I have a testimony to share. So two years ago, my wife and I, we lost our firstborn son. But we were trusting in God for a breakthrough. And last year in December, my wife conceived again. But this pregnancy has been really trying and difficult. There were three instances that we actually went to the emergency department because of bleeding. And we were so afraid of losing our second son. But Lord, but church, we trusted in God. We stood in the promises of God as church members prayed. As the saints interceded, we said, Lord, all your promises are yes and amen. We're going to trust you for life and life abundantly. We spoke life and church. Just yesterday, our son celebrated his six months birthday. Amen. God is good, church. If you come with a need today, let's declare and declare that our God is good. All His promises are yes and amen. Father of kindness.
Yes, Lord. We fix our eyes on you, the perfecter of our faith. Lord, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of trials and tribulation, we fix our eyes solely upon you and only you because you are our constant. Let's sing this church. You're my constant in the chaos. You're my compass when the road is long. You're my portion never failing for me, for me. Only Jesus, you're my constant in the chaos, in the chaos, you're my compass when the road is long, you're my portion, never failing for me, only Jesus. Let my heart want for nothing but you, just you. Let my heart want for nothing but you, just you. The riches of this world could never satisfy. Let my heart want for all. Come on, church, let us cry out to Him that He is our constant. He is the only one we want. He's our portion and He's our center. You're my center, should I wander? You're my future, you redeem my past every moment. And then forever for me, for me, only Jesus. Let's sing for me, for me, only Jesus. Let my heart want for nothing. Let my heart want for nothing but you, just you. Let my heart want for nothing. Just you, the riches of this world could never satisfy. Let my heart want for only. Let's sing it one more time. Let my heart want for nothing but you, just you. Let my heart want for nothing but you, just you. center of our life we sing for me for me for me only Jesus for me for me come on church let's sing this for me only Jesus for me for me let's make this our declaration only Jesus for me for me is no one else but you only Jesus for me go oh, for me yes Lord only Jesus for me for me come on give me Jesus only Jesus for me for me come on church let's cry out to him only Jesus for me for me Thank you. 
Let's just love the Lord wherever you are. I don't know if you're standing. Just tell how much you love Him. Just tell the Lord how much you love Him. Those who are online, in your home, wherever you are, also respond to the song as you sing. Just tell the Lord, only you, Lord, is worthy of my love. Only you, Lord Jesus, our faithful God, that I adore you, that I want the Lord to love you even more. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful. God is good. God is faithful. God wants to minister to all of us here. You know, when I just came up, the first thing that I felt was my stomach here that is a pain. I don't know any one of you have abdomen pain or stomach pain that you need a, a healing from the Lord. I just want you to raise your hand. Even those of you who are online, just, just raise your hand. Any one of you who have this abdomen pain, pain here or your stomach pain. Yeah, I, I, I see that hand. The next one. You know, some of, I, I just felt my leg is weak. Both my knees are weak. The calf is weak. And any one of you that you felt that way, that you have, you find weakness in your leg. I just want you, maybe I'll sit down, even in the online, if you are sitting down, just I want you to rise up. You know, hold something, hold something. And raise your hand and say, I have this problem. I have a, a, this problem with my legs. I want healing. I saw, yeah, I see the hands there. And one last thing. The Lord wants to heal this morning. I have a pain on my right head here. I don't know what is happening. Is it some of you are having headache or pain, a, a screeching pain right at the right side of your head? Anyone here? Just raise your hand to the Lord. Just raise your hand to the Lord. I saw the hand there, sir. Bless you. Come, let's trust the Lord and lay hands yourself. Just lay hands yourself on the area that you need the touch from the Lord. It's a head, it's a leg, it's a stomach area. Just let's come. The Lord is good. The Lord promises is yes and amen. The Lord wants to heal. And those of you are online, do the same. Just put a hand on the place that you are having this pain. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You know, last, last, just a few days ago, I ministered to someone who has not been sleeping well for the past two years. He says that I can only sleep for maybe the two hours. Pastor, pray for me. Just give me four hours of sleep, I'll be happy. You know, I ministered to him, I prayed with him. And the next day he texted me, Pastor, I, the last night I slept for seven hours. Even he good? God is good. And God wants to heal. Yeah, let, come, let's just lay hands on where you have this problem. And God is working here. God is present here. In the name of Jesus, the Lord, you see, oh Lord, your children, the Lord, they're having this need. And Lord, we are coming to, oh Lord, to you together together in one accord in unity Lord and trust in your word in your promises that yes and amen that Lord you dying oh Lord for our sins and not the end but your wounds you say heal all our diseases heal all our infliction that in the name of Jesus right now I speak life into the head I speak life into the stomach I speak life into the legs in the name of Jesus be healed right now be healed in the name of Jesus we give you praise Lord hallelujah just test wherever you are the pain that you have you know just test it and 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 after this if any one of you got healed just wave to me you feel you are better in the now the presence of God here is the Lord that is healing you you just wave just wave to me can I see anyone that's waving praise you Lord hallelujah praise you Jesus hallelujah and just continue, yeah, continue to trust the Lord for progressive healing. And those also, also on the online, just test it out and receive your healing. We are to continue to pray for those who are not well, you know, Yasmin and Jimmy. Let's, let's just lift up our hands, the ask of prayer. They ask for us as a church, as a body of Christ to just remember them in prayer. Lord Jesus, you see, Yasmin's a lot need. She has been bleeding for a year and there's a cease in the uterus. In the name of Jesus, right now, we speak a lot. 
healing a lot in tune that you trust to stop bleeding in Jesus' name. Stop the pain. Stop the concern. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your peace of God bring a lot into Jasmine's life that Lord, even as you trust you in Jesus' name right now, Lord, let the God, the bleeding stop and let the God, the healing comes forth. In also with the pray for Jimmy having liver cancer and also his salvation, the Lord. Father, Lord, you said you sent your word and heal every diseases. And I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, you sent again the man, your people, the Lord, around him, that Jimmy can come to know you, not just for healing, but as a healer. So in the name of Jesus, the Lord, I release a God as he responds to you. Lord, release a God, the faith of God, that in Jesus' name, the cancer will die in Jesus' name and stop in Jesus' name, and all the cells will be well in Jesus name we will give you all the praise hallelujah let's give God praise for his goodness hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah praise the Lord let's let's just uh, you know in this attitude of worship and let's continue to just worship the Lord you know for you Lord for you only, only Jesus, Jesus is able Jesus for me for me only Jesus for me, for me. Only Jesus for me, for me. Only Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come across this place. Why don't we lift our hands just in front of us to say yes, Lord? That is our prayer. For me, only Jesus. And as we gather around your word this morning, Lord, I pray that you will give us a deeper and greater revelation of what it means to have only you, to only live for you, Jesus. So Lord, you open up our hearts as we open up your word. You speak to us, God, and let not any person leave this place or even those online, may they be changed and transformed by the power of your word. We thank you, Lord. We worship you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, turn to someone next to you and tell them, I pray all week that I'll be sitting next to you this morning. Even if it's not true. Praise the Lord. Well, hello, um, it's good to be here this morning. My name is John, one of the pastors here at SIBKL. Uh, if you did not know, this is actually my first time being back here in this sanctuary, uh, being on stage preaching to a live audience for a while. Um, I was in Australia for about eight months. We only it was supposed to be only for three, and then um, things happened, went over there, so was still living out of a suitcase. Um, you know, had, went there in a, in a family of three, came back here with a family of four, so much has happened uh, in the past eight months, thank you. And um, yeah, so I'm a little bit rusty, uh, if I forget what to say, if I forget how to English for a moment, just forgive me, pray for me, but uh, I, I'm a little bit nervous, it is overwhelming to see all of you here, but uh, nonetheless, I have something that, that's on my heart that I would like to share with you this morning. So while I was away in Australia, you may be thinking, Wan Itiu Hao Lo Chi Melbourne. Okay, let me tell you, Melbourne was, uh, I was, I spent more time at home because it was also lockdown and all that kind of stuff. So when I was in lockdown, um, I had a lot of time to um, think. Well, not really, you know, I had, I had like two kids, but I, I had a lot of time to actually just seek God and um, the time away, f you know, from whatever that was happening here was also an opportunity just to really seek God and to allow Him to speak to me. So this morning, the message that I'm going to be sharing to you, I'm going to warn you up front. It's not, it may not be the most encouraging. It may not be the nicest, uh, it may not be the, the one that you would like to hear, but I believe it is the one that you may need to hear. It is one that God spoke to me. God, I've, I've been marinating in it. I've been sitting on it and it's just something that God has, God has also, almost like been doing like heart surgery on me. And, and, and you know, and I just, I just feel like, wow. 
Um, I didn't know what to share. I was scheduled to share today. I didn't know what to share, so I thought it's only apt if I just share what the Lord spoke to me rather than preparing a message just for the sake of preparing a message. Um, the message that I have this morning is titled this, Serving That Which Was Not Ordered. So before we begin, uh, I need you to talk to me a little bit, okay? Is it okay that we talk to each other? Uh, how many of you here, you, you prefer Asian food over Western? Just give me a wave. Those of you online, okay, yeah, we've got them. Any of you, you're more Western food over Asian? Anybody? Right, okay, we've got a few, we've got a few. Okay, so I see the, I, I miss those on the balcony. Asian food, anybody? Who, Asian? Okay, Asian. Western food, anybody? In the balcony? Online? Uh, sorry, I won't be able to see it, but I trust that because majority of the people here put their hands up for Asian food. I'm just going to go with the majority, okay? Now, how many of you here, you are more, uh, more of a rice person than noodles? Anybody? Just for those, a uh, more rice person, okay, yeah? More, uh, anybody more noodle person? Okay, okay, kind of like, it's kind of like a half-half, all right? So, for argument's sake, I'm going to go with noodles, okay? So, can you imagine if you went to a restaurant, like after the service, and you went to maybe a seafood restaurant, and you have your mind set on, I am going to order some nice Hokkien mee. Anybody feeling hungry a little bit? You know, Hokkien mee, and you, 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 you have a mind set on that, you order that, and get this, you're at a restaurant, you sit down, 15 minutes has passed, you're okay, you're a good Christian, you're not angry, you're super patient, you got the fruits of the Spirit flowing within you, but then you start seeing the people around you get their food. How many of you do feel that your Christianity is now a little bit challenged, right? And then you start seeing the other tables that came, bef- that came after you, they got their food next. And the thing that they, or- that they ordered, they got it and you haven't gotten it. Now at that point, it is a true test of whether the Lord Jesus is really in your life. Half an hour later, your food finally comes, you go thank the Lord. But they come and they bring to you a plate of fried rice. Now, what did you order? You ordered Hokkien noodles, right? And you're like, "Uh, excuse me, I did not order this. And the the chef himself has come up and told you, it's okay, Um, I have prepared this dish specially for you. It is like taken from wheat grown in the most exotic place of Vietnam or something, I don't know, right? The ingredients is hand-picked, the lap chong is super nicely glazed and is the best and choices of ingredients. Have this fried rice instead. Now, most of us will be like, chin tai, I'm hungry, whatever. But for the rest of us, we will be like, I did not order this. I ordered noodles. Now, let's think for us. Let me ask you for a moment. What makes a good Christian. Think for a moment. What are indicators in our lives, speaking to those who believe in Jesus, who profess to follow Jesus, is that we have got this faith thing correct. What defines the success of a Christian life? And if we're not careful, there are times where we could think, well, I've done these different things. I've checked off a few different boxes. I have attended this meeting. I've gotten that certificate. And we could bring it to God and God could be like, I did not order this. Now, I'm not, I'm not just speaking out of air because let me show you scripture. Okay, let's go to scripture. We're gonna go to Matthew chapter seven. Now it says this in Matthew chapter seven, verse 18 to 23. It says this, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Let's look at that one again, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, the only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Verse 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never 
knew you away from me, you evil doers. Somebody say, ouch. Ouch. Can you imagine if you lived your whole life thinking that you were doing what God, what supposedly God wanted? Now you could be sitting here and you could go, what are you talking about? I'm blessed. You know, my life's good. Children's okay. Business is doing well. Ministry is growing. All these things, you know, I'm blessed. Let me tell you something. Wealth is not an indicator of God's approval on your life. Let's, let's, let's debunk that for a moment, okay? Just because you are rich, it doesn't mean that God is with you. Because if that's the case, then most of the people in the world who are the richest people in the world, they will be Christians. But we know for a fact that they are not. And let's think about the opposite as well, okay? Poverty. Poverty is not necessarily more spiritual than wealth. So yeah, let's just understand this, okay? God is not the God of prosperity or the God of poverty. He is the God of provision. Can somebody say amen to that? You're too quiet this morning. You got to speak back to me. Can somebody say amen to that? God is the God of provision. So God provides and we all need God's provision. Whether we are rich or whether we are poor, we need material needs from God. We need spiritual needs from God. Just because you're rich doesn't mean you have the grace of God on your life. We all need God's provision. So just because we are experiencing hardship, it does not mean that God has left us. Let's get that clear. And just because we are going well in life, it does not necessarily mean that we are also walking in the will of God. So what then does God want from you and I? In this, we, we are coming to the age where, or we're coming into a time where, you know, it's, um, uh, I don't, I'll be honest, okay, I am so sick about hearing about COVID-19. Any of you with me? Can I be honest? I'm so sick. What vaccine this, mass this, Omicron, Megatron, Decepticon, I don't know. I'm just like enough, okay? I'm tired of it. I'm kind of like, let's just move on, right? But in our moving on with life, so we're thinking of already planning for the future. Some of us are thinking, how can we reposition our business, reposition our ministry? How, how are we going to send, how are we going to chart our school, our kids' children schooling life and all that kind of stuff? But let's not just look at all these things, but let's look at where God wants to lead His people. And His people are you and I. Not just those standing on the platform, but those who profess to believe in Him. So let's take Note all that. Let's, keep, let's take check and see what does God want. And Hosea 6 verse 6 says this. This is what God wants. I want you, says the Lord, to show love, not offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more than I want burn offerings. God wants us to love Him and to know Him, not just know about him. You see, let me bring you, let me bring a thought to you. You cannot make up in sacrifice what you lose out in obedience. You cannot make up in sacrifice what you lose out in obedience. I have met countless well-meaning people where they think that just because they serve God, you know, just because I give money to the church, just because I, I, I fulfill the minimum spiritual, religious requirements, I'm good. I can do whatever I want. But what, God, what does God say? God says, I want you to love me and not just show sacrifice or just offer sacrifices. And the Bible here also says in Hosea that he, God wants us to know Him, not just know about. We live in an age where literally you can Google almost anything. Is it true? Right? When I was growing up, if I didn't know something, I had to go and ask my dad or my mom or open this ancient thing called the encyclopedia. Most of us, some of you will be like, what's that? Okay, ask your, I don't know, go ask your parents or go and Google it. And we live in an age where we can Google absolutely anything. We can even Google answers what to do when I'm depressed or what to do, you know, this, what to do. We, we can look for anything. So there is no lack of knowledge. But how many of you know knowledge is not the same as wisdom? Y'all feel me? Right? You understand? 
right? Knowledge is not the same as wisdom. And what does the Bible say about wisdom? Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord, of God. When we know God, not just know about Him. You see, you could be sitting here in this pew and you could know a lot of things about me. You could know, you could make judgments, you could make certain assessments about whoever stands on stage, whatever pastor that preaches. Maybe you can go onto their social media account. Maybe you can go onto the website. Maybe you can listen to their past sermons. You can know something about a particular person, but that does not mean you actually know them. And that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to know Him, to know Him fully. You know, J.I. Packer said this, he put it this way. There is a difference between knowing God and knowing about God. And listen to this. When you truly know God, you have the energy to serve Him, bonus to share Him, and contentment in Him. Let's think about that for a moment. Let's sit on that for a while. You will have energy to serve Him, bonus to share Him, and contentment in Him. Real quick, three points I have for you this morning. What does God desire from us? If I can break it down a little bit more. More than attendance, God wants our allegiance. More than just attendance. I am absolutely grateful that we can now have physical church. In fact, one of the words I do not want to hear for a long time is this I can't even say it. The saying makes me want to throw up. This word, Zoom. Oh, any of you feel me? Zoom. Send me the link. No, I don't want to send you the link. Here's Zoom. Any of you feel me? It's like, ah, I'm tired of Zoom. You know, it's like, as Pastor Chu would say, you become a Zoom B. Right? It's like, ah, I don't want to get this Zoom. So now we got this physical church and many of us, you know, we, we, we can't wait. We're coming back and all that. And those of you who are still online, you still make it a point to tune in. You still make it a point to stream in. Great, kudos to you. But more than just attendance, God wants our allegiance. Because how many of you know this? You could be in the church, but Christ could not be in you. <laughs> you, 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 you see, the temple that God wants to live in is not made of bricks and mortar, it's made of heart and soul. Do we have allegiance? Do we give allegiance to God? And how do we do that? You see, John 14, verse 15, really simple. It says this, If you love me, Jesus says, you will what? Obey my commandments. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. And yes, to gather as a community is one of the commandments. But Christianity, the faith life, is not just limited to what we do on a Saturday or a Sunday. Let me give you an example. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've spoken to, um, so in my... In the last nine years that I've been doing ministry, a majority of my work has been amongst youth. So on and off, I get parents who come to me and they are absolutely perplexed by their child because um, some of them, they say that, wow, you know, my son or my daughter at home, they are one way. You know, they look so good, they look so quiet, they look so well behaved. But then they find out that when they're outside, they're doing all kinds of different things. Now, I wouldn't say what those things are, but needless to say, they're not the same person that they thought it would be. And they go, oh no, what happened to my Tai Tai? What happened to my Mui Mui? You know, what's going on and all that. But yet, you know, it, it, that's not what happens as well, is that a lot of times we come to church and we know the right seat to sit in. We know when to say amen. We know the right thing to do and the thing not to say and not to do. But... The minute we leave the church, we just revert back to whatever that we are doing. You know, we, 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 pretend, we act and we live as if like because our, our parents are not watching or we think that God is not watching, but yet God knows and sees everything. Do we live a life that is pleasing unto Him? Absolutely everything, more than just attendance, is our following of Jesus just limited to the Sunday experience or the Saturday experience? Is it just, well, 
when a pastor says something to inspire me, then I will get inspired. Oh, if they sing the right song this morning, then I will get our worship. Or, or is it is it something that we know? Man, God, you are so real to me. Jesus, I know who you are, and because of that, I cannot ignore you in my life. I can I cannot help but help portray you in every single aspect of what I do. There should be no separation of the sacred and the circular. You know, on Sunday, I'm like this, but I work, I gotta be someone else because work is work. Or, you know, I gotta be like this with my friends because that's that and church is just, no. God is wanting to be in every single part of our lives. And that leads me to my second point. More than just service, God desires our surrender. More than just service. Some of us, we are fervently serving the Lord. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. Whether it's in the building like this, thank you to all the worship team for making services work even throughout the pandemic and throughout home and all that kind of stuff. Great. Some of us are so faithful. We turn up every week, uh, week in, week out. We set up, we do all of that. Some of us, yeah, we, we are serving God even in our workplace, in our families and all that. We do so much for God, but yet we are not truly surrendered to Him. I don't know whether you have this room in your house where it is the, the, the shoving room. You know what I mean? Or it's like a, or, or a particular drawer where it's like a shoving room. You know, it's like where if guests were coming over, you would just quickly, come on, you just shove all these things into the room. Any, any of you like that? Or is it just me? Okay. You would just shove everything into that one room. And that one room, right, it's like if... If you, know, if you have friends over, you will give them a house tour, you will show them every single room except that room. They'll be like, what's in that room? Oh, nothing. It's just um, a door. There's nothing behind that, right? You, you, be, you, you won't want them to see what's behind that door. And for us, if we are really, really honest, there are many things in our lives where we do not want to show it on to God. It's like, you know, you're just serving someone, right? Um, it's actually the lowest form of relationship. Can I, can I get you to think for a moment? Many of us, we have bosses, right? Whether it's a boss or if you are, you know, you're still young, your parents. So we do what they want, but that doesn't mean we actually relate to them. In fact, for many of us, when we work, we have this thing that we want to establish and that is called boundaries, right? So it's like, if it's a certain time, your boss should not call you. And if you're the boss, please don't call your staff after work hours, okay? Amen. Right? For, for us, we set boundaries. We go, if it's a certain time, don't tell me, don't call me. Or if it's not in my job scope, don't give it to me. I'm not paid for this. So what we do is we set boundaries. And okay, I encourage that. You know, boundaries are healthy and everything. But when it comes to God... He's either Lord of all or not Lord at all. Because we set boundaries with God. We go, well, God, on my weekends, you can, have, uh, you can have my time. But when it comes to my relationships, oh, don't you dare go near that. When it comes to how I run my business, don't you dare speak to me about that. When it comes to how I speak to my spouse, don't you dare tell me about that. When it comes to how I raise my children, that's none of your business, Lord. When it comes to different things, you know, none of it stay away. And we put God at a distance thinking that it is okay because why? Well, I serve God. I serve Him. But let me show you what the Bible says. Romans 12 verse 1. It says this, Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all that He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that He will find acceptable. Look at this. This is truly the way to worship Him. More than just raising our hands on a Sunday, do we lay our lives down every single day. 
The Bible here tells us that we are a holy and living, we are to be a holy and living sacrifice. That is the true way to worship Him, the proper way. The NIV version says to worship Him. And the problem with being a living sacrifice is His tendency to crawl off the altar. You know what I mean? It's like there are times where God will confront us with our motives God will confront us with our, our intentions. God will confront us with our behaviour. And maybe that the confrontation will not come in the form of an angel appearing to you. Now, you may not actually want that. A couple of, um, couple of days, uh, weeks ago, I saw this picture. Uh, the young people call it a meme. Those of you who know what it is. It's like what true angels actually look like. You know? And it was this like, octopus looking thing with like many eyeballs and everything like that. So that was actually a literal description of an angel. I was like, wow, that's actually true. You know, it's not like one that comes in nice robes with a halo and all that kind of stuff. So you don't want an angel to appear to you to confront you. You are already being confronted when you read the Word of God. The Word of God is a mirror. The Word of God is a reflection. It is actually something to get us to think. Am I living according to the Word of God or just my preferences? That's what the Word of God does. And, we, we, and there are times where confrontation can come. Maybe a good meaning brother or sister in the faith tells us, hey, you should not be like this. You should not live like this. You should not continue doing this. Don't live like this. What would we do? Will we say it's okay? I know. I serve God. I've already, de- I've already given tithes. You can't do anything to me. Leave it. And we, and, and we leave it as that. Surrender. Is there anything too much for God to ask from us? You know, I'm reminded of the story in Matthew chapter 19 where there's this story of the rich young ruler going and approaching Jesus. Now, we know how this story goes. He goes and he tells Jesus, he says, Good teacher, tell me what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus entertains him, tells him, well, you know, don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't um, honour your father and mother, do all, keep all the laws. And the rich young ruler very confidently said, all this I have kept since young. Now you would think that Jesus would go, wow, look at this guy. Hey, disciples, come here. All right, angels, come on down here. Let's blow a trumpet and let's give this guy an award. But he doesn't. He says to him, if you want to be perfect, sell everything you have and give to the poor and follow me. And needless to say, the rich young ruler did not follow through on that. He left, the Bible says he left away feeling dejected. Now, do we have things in our lives or do things have us? If you have something, you can give it away freely at any time. But if you had to struggle and think whether I can actually give this up, it, is arguably, it can be arguably said then that you don't have that thing, you actually, that thing actually has you. Many of us, we have dreams, we have aspirations, we have ideas, we have intentions, we have plans, we have all these different things. And we, instead of coming to God and go, God, is this what you want? We want to come to God and we want to rubber stamp it on our lives. That's what, I've, that's what I do a lot of times. I'll be really honest with you. I'm not preaching this message to you, not just you. I'm, I'm actually preaching this to myself as well. There are many things, times in my life I thought this is what God wants for me, this is what God wants me to go. And when God challenges that, I find it so difficult to say yes to God. But in the same way, will we surrender it on to Him? I'm also reminded of the story of Abraham. How many of you good old Abraham? Father Abraham. He, man, Abraham went through a lot. Like, he was, he, in his old age, he was given a promise, you are going to have a child. Now, after having two young kids, can I tell you, when I'm like 100 years old, if the law comes and tells me, you're going to have a child, I'll be like, Lord, please not me. Can you pick somebody else, okay? Right? But they were, he, wants, he wanted a child, and the Lord said, you are going to have a child. And then he went through all this drama in Egypt with Sarah. And then he went through this drama with Ishmael. They went through all of that. And then finally, they have Isaac. And then one fine day, the Lord speaks to Abraham and says, Hey, Abraham, 
Take your son, your one and only son, and bring him up to the mountain to sacrifice him. Now, if I was Abraham, I'll be like, hold up. You got a wrong number, God. Right? You, you dialed the wrong number. There must, be, you know, there must be Abraham, somebody else, not me. God, this is the promise you have given me. This is what you have spoke to me. After, you don't know what I've been through to get to this point, and now you're telling me to give it up? But Abraham didn't do that. Abraham got up early in the morning, told Isaac to come on, and they went up the mountain, and we know how the story goes. Well, is there anything that we will withhold from the Lord? Is there something? Is there anything? Is there any price too much to pay if God were to challenge us? My last point is this. Not just our own plans, He desires us to live out His purpose. Um, here's a revelation for everybody, okay? Especially, especially those who are younger. Um, do you know that God does not actually care what job you have? Can I be real? God doesn't care whether you become an accountant or whether you become a doctor or you become a lawyer, whether you become a creative person or whether you become this or become that. God doesn't care. God has, okay, not that God doesn't care, but God is not particularly um, wanting to be so specific about that. What God cares is how we would go about doing those jobs. God doesn't care what study, what course you take and everything. God cares about the kind of person that you will be throughout your course and to those around you. Because here's the thing, you see, if, if the point of salvation, okay, is to get to heaven, um, don't you think that after having received Jesus, we should just drop dead? Think about it for a moment. Because if, if the point of being a Christian is just to get to heaven, won't it be a whole lot easier that upon confessing Jesus, we just drop dead on the spot? I think it's super, I think it'll be a lot better. Because how many of you know it's not easy to actually be a good Christian? You feel me? You don't, you don't believe me? Get onto the road and spend 10 minutes driving around, you will know. Right? How many of you know that it's not easy being a good Christian? It's not. So, if it's all, if it's just to get us into heaven, we should just like, you know, where we come and answer the altar call, say the sinner's prayer, you know, we, lightning should just strike us and we should just go. Then woo, we're in heaven, we have achieved perfection already. But no, you and I are still here. And when we are still here, that tells me that God is not done. You are not dead, so God is not done. Let me throw another thought into you, for you. Don't ask what is wrong with the world. Ask what happened to the salt and light. Don't ask what's wrong with the world. Ask what happened to the salt and light. Who's the salt and light? You guys! Not me, okay? Not the pastor. You guys. Because everywhere you go, you have an opportunity to represent God. And, if you, and even in your own homes, you have an opportunity to represent God, to walk according to His ways. You know, I thought about this. Um, this is a freebie for you. I, I thought, I, I've, always, I've always dreamt to write a book. But every time I, 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 think I sit down and I want to write a book, I'll be like, nah, I can't do this. You know, like Pastor Chu is going to pray for me because like, I'm like, what in the world am I going to say? And, and it's like, there's so many good ideas out there. But I, I've been thinking a lot about um, uh, discipleship and thinking about following Jesus and thinking about the family life and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I, I, so, so I had this idea, okay? So none of you to steal this idea, right? If somebody steals this idea and it, it comes out as a book, I will find you and I will bless you with the full gospel. But anyway, so you th think about this. Um, you know, many of us, right, we, we desire to get married, yeah? For those of us who are not married, or those who are married, we get married. And after you get married, you have children. Now, apart from work, your family is the one that's gonna take up most of your time. Now, how many of you know being married to someone, you have to not be so self-centered, right? You have to be considerate. You have to, in, almost, in a certain sense, die to yourself in order to make the marriage work. What you're doing, 
you are following Jesus because Jesus said, whoever wants to follow me must take up their cross and deny themselves. Let me tell you, most marriages break down because one party or both parties are extremely selfish and only want to think about themselves. That's the first part. And then when you have kids, that's going to be even more um, stretch or expand it because now that you have kids, your life is not about you. You gotta, you know, you, you, you gotta plan, you gotta spend money however you want, you gotta think about the future. So you're continually dying to yourself. But then when you raise your children in the ways of God, let me tell you something you can delegate education to school, but you cannot delegate parenting and discipleship to the church. Don't matter how great the youth program is. Don't matter how great the pastor is, unless you send them to stay with Pastor Chu. Right? You go, well, Pastor Chu, my 12 year old got a problem. Can he kind of stay with you? Right? You just drop him off in his house. I'll give you his address later. Right? You, you, you can't do that. You have to raise your own children. It don't matter whether children's ministry is online or offline or not online, you know. But just because they go to church once a week, it doesn't mean that they're going to get God in them. You have to raise them according to the ways of God. And when you raise them, you know what, in the ways of God and get them to walk according to God's word and His plans and His purposes, do you know what you're doing? You are fulfilling the great commission. Boom, you already nailed the Christian life. That's it. Love your wife. Have a great marriage. Raise your children in the, in the ways of God. You've already fulfilled the gospel. You've already lived out the Bible. Boom, you can go, you can retire. That's so easy, right? But how many of you always know it's not? It's not. Friends, let's ask ourselves this. Why am I here? Why am I given what I am given? Why am I given the spouse I'm given? Why am I given the children I'm given? Why am I given the work opportunity I'm given? Why am I given the study opportunity I'm given? Because the Bible says this. He told them, this is Jesus, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send workers into his harvest field. And we can get a worship team up. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. I will leave you with this thought. You and I are the move of God that we have been praying for. Do you know that? You and I are the move of God that we have been praying for. People earnestly pray for revival. People on, earnestly pray for this kind of things, for, God, for, for a spirit of God to move and all that kind of stuff. But I've been also wrestling with this. Do you know revival doesn't mean packing out a stadium or venues? Even though... I appreciate events like that. I recognize its necessity. But there is no point in packing up a venue, but then everybody comes to an event and they leave that event the same. And how many of you know that the Christian life is not lived on the mountaintop? It's lived in the valley low. The mountaintop experience prepares us for valley low living. So you can have great worship, you can have great encounter. You can shake all you want. And you can fall down all you want, as hard as you can. But what would count is not what happens in this room, not just what happens in this room or wherever room you're in. What will count is when we walk out those doors, when we walk down those stairs, when we get into our cars, and when we go into back to our lives, to our families, to our workplaces, to our schools. Man, do you carry Jesus everywhere you go? Do you represent Him? Or is, it, or is this just another thing to do? Because I want to tell you, there are many things to do. There are many other places to be on a weekend. There are many other activities that you could be going, going about. There could, be, they, you know, there could be a whole lot of other things that you could be spending your time with. But what is it all for? So that we can have an encounter, can have a touch of God so that we are equipped and empowered for the task of God. The touch from God is for the task of God. Why are you here? And what are you going to do with whatever time the good Lord has given you? Bonus point for you. More than religion, 
God wants relationship. You see, all the things that I've told you, it's not, again, more things to do. Because let me tell you, the key to walking the life or living the life that God wants you to live is not trying harder. It's to trust God more. It's to surrender more. It's to yield to God more. Because when you yield to God, He will give you His grace. And when you walk in His grace, you will automatically meet all that God needs you to do because you're walking by His empowerment. You're not relying on your own strength. You're walking by the power of the Holy Spirit. And how do we get there? It's not by being religious. It's not by checking up a few boxes or doing some stuff that we think that we need to do, even though all those things are not necessarily wrong in itself. But it's relationship. And God desires relationship with each and every one of us. Now, I, I get it. The last two years, COVID and everything, it would have made it hard to have a proper relationship with God because we've worked from home with the kids and all these different things, all the pressure, financial pressure and all that. I get it and I understand. It's difficult. And more than that, God is not just wanting you to come back to church or wanting you at home to just continue tuning in. God wants you to go into a deeper level of relationship with Him. And can I encourage all of us to do that? That we get into a deeper relationship with God. Not consume more content, not go for more services, not take up more courses or try to serve more, even though all those things are not necessarily bad, but to get into a relationship. And that's what God wants. Even for those of you who you have never been to church before or you have never, uh, or you don't believe, or you're not a Christian, that's what God wants. God doesn't want you, more things from you God wants a relationship with you and out of that relationship will flow all the things that I just talked about can we all bow our heads and close our eyes in this place without, with no one looking around I, I just feel that in this moment um, I want to give people an opportunity to respond to God you're not responding to me you, you understand you're, you're responding to God and if you are here in this place and you know that there is an area in your life or there are areas in your life, there are things in your life that is not right or you know that there is a call that God has placed on your heart but you have been avoiding it and you have not been, you have been pushing it aside. You know that God is leading you to do something or make, to make a certain decision and you have been pushing it aside. Can I say that this day would you be obedient and trust God? If there are areas in your life that you know is not right and you go, God, I need your grace in this area. Will you surrender that part of your life onto God? With nobody looking around, okay? We're giving everybody some privacy. If that is you, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. I'm going to get you to stand. And when you stand, it's not so that, that people will notice you or anything like that. It's so that I can pray for you and you're standing not in response to me and there's no judgment whatsoever because you're responding to God saying God I give you my life I surrender my heart I want to get myself right with you I don't just want to go about the day go about the motions I, I, I want to live a life that glorifies you if that's you if no one looking around everybody giving each other privacy could you stand up and let me pray for you if that is you come, you don't wait you don't wait God, we're running out of time if that's you you just stand up and you say God I want to surrender to you. I want to give my heart to you. I want to give my life to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is somebody here, uh, before I, I, I pray, there is somebody here, whether you're here or you're online, but I just feel like uh, God spoke to me yesterday to actually pray for this one particular specific person. Is that God has actually asked you to do something. I don't know what it is. It's to go into full-time ministry or to start something or whatever. I don't know. Or change jobs, whatever. God has specifically told you that's what He wants you to do. But you are very concerned because of finances. You go, I, I can't do that. But the Lord is saying, I want you to say yes to me and see the provision flow into your life. Don't wait for all the cards to line up and then say yes because that's not faith. But God says, I want you to say yes to me 
and then I will provide. I have never let you down and I will not, I will never let you down, says the Lord. If that is you, I just want you to respond as well. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for every single person here in this room. I thank you for those who are standing, whether they're here or whether they're online and they're responding. Lord, I pray, first and foremost, will your grace abound onto us, fall on us, God, that we would be able to live according to the way that you want us to live. God, we give you every part of our lives, even the parts that we are not proud of. And we say, shine your light, pour out your spirit, heal us, help us, God, be the type of man and woman, father or, or son or husband or wife, daughter. Let us be that person that you want us to be via your Holy Spirit. And God, I pray that if there, are, if there is fear or hesitation holding us back from being obedient to your call, God, I pray conviction to come, encouragement to come, that we will walk according to your plans and purposes. We thank you, Lord. Let's all stand in this place and let's worship Him. Can we all just do that? Let's sing this song, For Me, Only Jesus, as a closing prayer, as a decoration to Him. Thank you, Jesus. For me, for me, only Jesus, for me, for me, only Jesus, for me, for me, only Jesus, for me, for me, yes, Lord, only Jesus, for me. That is our prayer and our desire. Let our hearts want nothing but you, Jesus. Not the riches of the world, not approval of men, not the pleasures or pressures of things around us, but let our hearts and our minds be fixed solely on you, Jesus. On you. We thank you, Lord, for this time and we thank you for this opportunity that we can worship and that we can gather around your word and I pray that whatever that we have experienced today whether it's through worship, prayer or the word we would not just forget about it as we exit this place but we would, it would take root and produce good fruit fruit that will last as your scripture says fruit that will last in us and that, that help us God help me God to continue to live a life that glorifies you and that's worthy of you. The times that we mess up, that I mess up, let your grace abound and let us continue to persevere and not give up to doing good works because in due time, we will reap a harvest as Galatians 6 verse 9 promises. We thank you for this time. We give you back all the praise and all the glory. We glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name we pray and everyone say, Amen. 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 Thank you for coming. I hope that encouraged you and I hope that challenged you. For those of you online, there is a link that you can jump onto for prayer if you need to someone.
talk to or if you are new to us even online you can go on to this link and for those of you here in the building if you uh, need prayer or something pastors will be here as well but otherwise God bless you take care have a good week ahead live for Jesus see ya thank you for joining us for service today if you would like someone to pray for you head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you one of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Just sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. All fields and floods, rocks, hills and lanes, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations rule. The glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders and wonders of of His love and wonders and wonders of His love. Yes, God, the wonders of Your love. We want to glorify and magnify Your name together now. Hark the herald angels sing. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. 
One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Hi everyone! Here's a step-by-step guide on how you can book your e-ticket online. First, log on to sibkl.org.my Then click on Physical Services. Next, scroll down and click on whichever service you would like to attend. You'll be directed to a new page where you can book your ticket. Please read through the guidelines as we care for your safety. Click on Register. Select Buy on Map. Zoom in to select your seats. Click Checkout. Fill in your details and you'll find the ticket in your email inbox. It's that simple. Looking forward to seeing you at church. Oh, come.